Okay, welcome to part one of this series. Um, in this video, I'm just going to go over the file structure that we're using, as usual, and then just sort of get on with the code. Um, it's another another one, quite a simple sort of system, so hopefully this won't take too long to go over. So, anyway, um, I've removed all the PHP code from these pages, and as you can see, this page is just, currently, it does absolutely nothing. Um, so, now that that's demonstrated, let's get on with talking about files. So, we're working in this folder here, no, this folder here, um, and this image.php is the page that I just had open in my browser. Um, we've got this images folder, and that's where all of the uploaded images will be stored. Um, so, that's like, well, it's, you know, where you'd put your images, your hosted images. Um, at the moment, that is currently empty. Um, this core folder is the folder that I always use, which contains the sort of entire back end of the site. So anything to do with sort of logic will go in here. So if we just open this up, you can see that we have this init.inc.php file. Um, this file just contains any code that you want to happen on all of the pages. So for example, you may want to start the session on all of the pages that you have, um, and say then you wanted to somehow, well, say you didn't need the session anymore, um, you would have to go through every single page individually, removing the session start call. And for a large site, you may potentially have like 20 or 30 pages even. Um, so, well, files. So you may, you know, want to avoid that uh, by using this single file which is included, because then you'd only have to edit this one file. Um, we also have this watermark.png file, um, and this is just the sort of overlay image that we're going to be putting in the top left corner um, of the uploaded images. Um, and this is just here because I couldn't really think of a better place to put it. Um, it is logic sort of related, so it can go there. Um, and then this ink folder is the file that, uh, sorry, the folder that contains any sort of library files. So in here at the moment we just have this single image.ink.php, and that's going to contain the function that we're going to be creating to um, add this watermark to the image and save it to a sort of location. So with that explained, let's get on with looking at the files. So if I just open up my editor here. Um, I'll just go to the image page first. You can see that all we have is a simple HTML um, file upload form. So we just have um, an input, a file input here with the name of image um, and then a submit button. So nothing too complicated there. At the top here we have a single line of PHP code which is just including that init file I just talked about. Um, and then, well, we'll get on to that in a minute. Um, this block here is where we're going to be writing the code that displays the image once it's been uploaded. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this page. And now the init file, which is being included, um, at the moment all it does is work out the path that it's in, so the folder that it's in, the full server path to this core folder in this case, um, and then it includes a the backend file based on that path. Um, I won't go over that too much because I've explained it in pretty much every other video. Um, but essentially this is just so that if you include the init file from a location like a folder other than the folder above it so say you included it from like admin or something like that so you'd be doing instead of doing like core slash init you'd do say you were in the admin folder you'd go up one and then do core this is just so that this basically still works these includes still point to the right files um, then we have this backend file which at the moment is currently completely blank and that's actually where we're going to be making a start. So, let's just create a new function in this um, file, and we're going to call it watermark image. So, whoops, um, good start mark image. It's going to take two parameters. The first one is going to be the location of the image currently on the server. So, image, um, and the second one is going to be the location that you want to save the watermarked image. So, output. So essentially what we're doing is creating a replacement or a sort of wraparound function for the move, well, no, not mm, similar. We're creating a function similar to the move uploaded file function, files function, um, because it takes, well, the same parameters. We're going to be passing in the temporary name here and the location we want to save the image here. So essentially this is uploading, if you like, the image with a watermark on it. Anyway, in this function, the first thing we need to do is get some information about the image. I'm going to do that using the get image size function. This function takes a single parameter, which is the image location, which is what we're passing in, and we're just going to store the result of this in the variable info. And then just after this, we're going to add a print underscore r of info just to see what information we're getting. 
And obviously, before we can, um, you know, sort of see this information, we need to be able to call this function. So we're going to go back to the image page now. So here, and then we're just going to add at the top, underneath the include, we're going to add a check for the file being uploaded. So we're going to use if is set files um, image, and that'll do because that will only be set once the file has been selected and uploaded. Um, and here we can just call the watermark function. So now we'll just use watermark image like so. And the location of the image currently is a temporary location which is stored in the files array again. So upload temp name. And for the second parameter for now we'll just pass in an empty string to prevent it causing any errors and we'll change that later, this is just sort of for testing. So going back to our browser, if we just select an image, just like any random, that'll do. Oh, I'm finding next upload, okay, I, was, I used upload and it was image. There we go. Hit reload, resend, there we go. So you can see this this here, this line is the result of the print underscore r um, info line. So you can see that, well, you can't really, it's not really that clear, but uh, it's an array with eight Wait, yeah, eight elements. No, nine. Mm, whatever. Um, so the zeroth element is the width of the image. The first element is the height. Um, the second one, sorry, it needs to be this one. Um, yeah, second is, I don't know, that's something to do with colour, I think. But you can check that on php.net. Third one is a little bit awkward. It's the string that goes into the image tag, which sort of sets the width and height. Um, that's to do with colour number of bits, so it's 8-bit colour, and then more importantly the MIME type here. And this is what we're going to be using. So, now that we know, we can use this uh, to work out um, which function we need to call, because PHP, uh, the image functions, you have to sort of know the type before you can create an image resource. So there's image create from, then there's PNG, GIF, and JPEG. So because this is an image slash PNG, we want to be using the image create from PNG variant so, going back to our backend file, what we need to do now is create a check to see which type the image is and create uh, an image resource from using the appropriate function. So, just under this print underscore r, we're going to use a switch statement. And what we're going to be switching on is the info mime variable. Um, I did have a video on logic where I explained how a switch statement works, so if you don't know what this is, you can go back and watch that. Um, but essentially it's the same as an if statement, ish, similar. Um, so um, f if the um, mime element of that array is image slash jpeg, we want to use image create from jpeg. So the way we do that with a switch is by using case, so for each possible value of that uh, variable that you pass into the switch, call, line, whatever you call it, you can create a case. Um, and what's under that case will run if that is matched. Um, so anyway, so if it is image slash um, JPEG, we want to do create a variable called main, and this is going to be equal to image create from JPEG um, image that's the location. So these functions create a new image resource which is not the same as an image, it's um, a GD, it's part of the GD library, or I don't know how you meant to say that, good. <laughs> um, and what it does is provides like a image that you can work with and then later on you can output it to an actual you know, a picture, a vis a visible image. So when I say image I don't mean like file, I mean image resource. Anyway. Um, and after that, we don't want to do anything else, so we just add a break, like so. Um, the second case is going to be image slash PNG, so let's add the second one. Image slash PNG. And then we want to create the variable main again, except we don't make a typo. This is going to be equal to image create from PNG, image, like so. And then again, we want to break because we don't want to go any further. Next one is going to be image slash gif. And again, create the variable from image create 
from gif passing in the image variable and then again break after that we need to provide a default um, and that's what happens basically if none of the um, cases are matched so essentially this is a else so you'd have if 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 else if else if else and the default is the same as the else part um, and the default is just we're going to return false because we failed to create the image resource um, we won't actually be checking that in this code but you know um, the next thing we need to do is turn on something called alpha blending um, and we do that using the image um, alpha let's try and spell this right blending yep <laughs> okay um, and what we want, we want we want to be turning that on for the main image and we want to set it to true which means on and what that does is um, say when you copy a image onto another image um, with alpha blending enabled PHP will blend the alpha channels um, so that the colors say if you upload a semi-transparent like white image over something that's semi-transparent and red PHP will blend those together so you'll get like a slightly transparent sort of pink um, that's my understanding anyway uh, you can check on php.net slash image alpha blending um, but you need it on otherwise it looks weird basically <laughs> anyway next thing we need to do is create the image that we want to copy on to the original source image the main image so we're going to create a new variable called overlay we're going to set this equal to image create from png because remember from the uh, well earlier um, I showed you the watermark.png image that's the image we want to create a resource from here so we need to access the path variable because it's in the core folder uh, and we can't just use path here as normal because it's not in this functions variable scope so we need to use the globals array so we just replace well the globals array say say you wanted to well say the path variable say the variable was called path in the sort of outside of the function so up here for example um, you would access this variable using the globals array inside the function by using globals oops you need a, one of those globals path like so um, and that's just the way PHP works basically so not not really anything any logic well there is quite a lot of logic to that but I'm not going to go into it too much anyway we want to use that variable here so instead of path whoops we use oh dear there we go we use globals um, that looks right that doesn't that does path like so oh there we go and then the file is just called watermark.png so now we've created the overlay resource we want to copy that onto the source you know, the main main image the background if you like so we're going to use the image copy function now which just copies one image onto another image uh, this takes an absolute heap of parameters it's fairly ridiculous the first one is the image resource that you want to copy the image onto in this case it's main second one is the image you want to copy onto that image in this case it's overlay third one is the uh, x coordinate you want to copy the x coordinates of the sort sorry the x coordinates yeah at the destination image so it's where you want to put the image on the background uh, in this case i'm going to use five and the next parameter is the y coordinate of that point so five again so this will be five pixels in from the left and five down from the top um, next two parameters are the x and y coordinates of the location you want to start copying from of the source image so if you want to copy the whole thing like we do here you just use zero and zero which means top left next two parameters are the width and the height of the source image the um, so in this case it's the overlay so we, we don't know those now uh, unless you just looked at the file but to be a bit more dynamic so say you, you want, might want to just replace watermark.png with a different size one different sized one even um, you need to make it so we need to detect the size because we have an image resource we could do that using the image sx function which gives you the width of the overlay and the image 
sy function, which gives you the oops, which gives you the height of the overlay. So now that will have copied the uh, watermark, the small image, onto the background image, which is the full thing they upload. After that, we just need to call image png to output the image. Um, we need to pass in the image resource that we want to output, which is main, and we want to pass in the location um, that we want to save the image, which is just passed into the function at the top as one of our parameters. So we just basically copy that to here, like so. And that's basically our function created. So um, I'm going to end this here and join me in part two, uh, where I'll show you how to use this function and test this function, actually. So if, you've, if I've made any mistakes, I'll find those out in part two. So thanks for watching and come back and watch part two.